Hey everybody, and welcome to tonight's show. Uh, tonight we're talking about in-camera trickery and shenanigans. This is shenanigans, the I say. Shenanigans. What the 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 voiceless or the faceless voice from way down there. Sorry, Gabe. I had I had it locked on me. Everybody was looking at me. <laughs> Nobody saw you. It was just this random voice. Anyway, uh, yeah, trickery and shenanigans. What your camera can do that you may not have thought about and is kind of funky. We've done a what your camera can do show before. It's kind of borderline with that. But this is going to be way cooler because we're talking about all kinds of things that your camera can do where you don't have to go to your computer. You don't have to do any editing afterward. It's really neat stuff in camera. You can do editing too. I mean, why not? Right, Gabe? Yeah, a lot of this stuff is, is going to be things that you can do in post, but sometimes it's just easier to do it in camera. Um, and, and it's also uh, sort of pushing the boundaries of your camera, making it do things that it wouldn't normally do to get pictures that you wouldn't normally get. Um, I read a cool article today entitled um, uh, getting, uh, getting the Picture isn't always about getting the perfect picture. It's just about getting the picture. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you got to push your camera through its, past its normal boundaries to get the picture. Mm -hmm. A neat little observation that you made in our little pre-chat as well is some of these features we're going to talk about may not be on some of the higher-end cameras. Mm -hmm. And like a lot of the stuff I'm going to be talking about is taken or is done on the shorts, you know, the D7100, where the D700 doesn't have any of it. So it's interesting. There's uh, my low-end camera, my phone. <laughs> has huge amounts of features where we it has all the features that we're going to get into some of the color selects and the, the this and the that and the huja majigger and but my 5D Mark III and my 7D don't have any of that. I can do a lot of that but I can you know I can do it in post or you can make your camera do it manually and we'll go into a bit of that. Yeah, and, and that's another thing, too, is if your camera doesn't have these features, well, you know what? Come and see me at the store, and I'll sell you one. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, or you never know. Uh, <laughs> but you, know, you don't have to do these things. A lot of the stuff that we're going to uh, talk about is stuff that you don't really even need to do. It's just kind of fun, uh, extra stuff that cameras can let you do. Um, we're going to talk about a few key things, and if there's something that you really want to know more about, we're starting this new thing called the How To Hangout. It's basically a paid hangout where we will go into an in-depth topic and spend time with you know up to nine other people and it really get into the topic very well and very clearly. And because it's live and interactive, uh, people will be asking questions. And you're going to get a lot more out of it. Yeah, some of the feedback we got on the show is people love getting uh, tidbits of information about new topics that pique their interest. So they want to know more, but they don't necessarily want us to go on for half an hour on that one topic uh, on that show. Um, and so we, we've sort of, we're still going to go, obviously going to go into detail because we love spreading information. But if you want to go, if you hear something that you're interested in and you want to go really in depth, that's what the how-to hangouts are going to be for. Exactly. And if you want to know more about those, then join the Day Tripper Photo community on Google+. And you'll find out a lot more. There's going to be a full class list coming soon. And the way it's going to work is basically there's going to be some classes that I'll do, there's going to be some classes that Gabriel will do, some classes that Darren will do, and uh, it'll be a lot more fun. Everybody will have a, a great time and get the expertise of each of us, which is awesome. Yeah, because it's on a Google Hangout, we're limited to a uh, maximum of nine students. So it, it's small, small classes. Um, you'll be learning on your own computer at your own house. So you don't learn on somebody else's computer and somebody else's environment and you have to go home and try and remember it. And then we'll have follow-up support calls and stuff. If there's something that you don't, you know, you're having a special hard time with or something like that, we'll offer support for that as well through the uh, community. Exactly. And that's the thing, too. I mean, if you have any questions now, if you join the Day Tripper community, you can ask them all the time. I just saw Ron posted a question about HDR tone mapping, which is a really cool thing. And if I didn't have the show right now to do, I'd probably be giving them a really long response. But I'm sure we will get to it eventually. I'm um, sure we will. Yeah, and for those of you who can't find the Hangout, I'm going to post the link on the event for the Hangout. So I will do that as soon as I can here, and more people will be able to watch the show. And by the way, we have a great time doing this show. Um, if you guys enjoy it, do us one small favor. At the bottom of the screen, click that little thing that says like or the arrow, and let us know that you like the show mm -hmm. as much as we like doing it. And uh, also, click the button that says subscribe. 
Uh, I know one of the one of the uh, some of the feedback that we get is that people have a hard time finding the show week after week. So if you hit subscribe, uh, when we're done a show, it'll uh, show up in your YouTube feed automatically. Uh, it'll give you a notification when the show is starting. And uh, if you hit subscribe through YouTube, uh, it's just easier to find us. Mm -hmm. I'm just spreading the good word right now in case anybody wonders why I'm looking so distant. Right. <laughs> so while he's doing that... Where's, um, where's Darren to fill in some of this conversation? Oh, yeah, yeah. Darren is not here today. Darren is at the cottage. So we are Darrenless. I, feel. I hope we will survive without him. <laughs> so just as you were Gabrielless a couple of weeks ago, you're Darrenless this time, and, and uh, we hope that you're having a good time at the cottage. Absolutely. Um, so, how's everybody doing tonight? I hope everybody's having a great night and taking lots of photos since last week. Uh, we haven't seen any of the photo challenge photos, the video that we had asked people to make. Oh, nice. So, um, I'm a little wondering, maybe people aren't wanting video as much as we thought they would, but that's still open. If you have made a video for the video, the three-week three, three week video challenge, then you can still post that to the community. I made a little clip of something. I haven't posted it yet, but that's because I haven't finished it yet. I will. Have you made one? Uh, I, I've been trying to think of an idea of one to do, and I just recently came up with an idea, so I'm going to whip something together. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So I'll keep my eyes up, eyes up for that. Um, it's called the Bible Slider. So it's all about making sliders for cameras at a Bible. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the whole new thing. <laughs> <laughs> the Peter McKinnon Bible Slider. <laughs> uh, you have to watch the other episode to get that reference, I guess. Yeah. Um, Gabe, why don't you tell us a little bit about that new little thing that you picked up? Ah, yes. So I have been a longtime user and lover of Wacom Tablets. Absolutely love Wacom tablets. Now, I had an Intuos 3, uh, which I've had. Uh, it's pretty much the tablet, the first tablet that the Ten Commandments were written on. Uh, it's old. <laughs> um, it's, it's an old tablet. Uh, two generations old. The one that's out now is the Intuos 5. And um, I, bought it, I bought the Intuos 5 Medium once, and I used it for a few days, and I liked it. It was just, it was really different because instead of a mouse, uh, I'll go into that in a second. So anyways, I returned it um, and then uh, recently got the opportunity to get another one to use uh, at one of my other studios and picked it up and now I'm just completely in love. So the Intuos 5, I got the medium, my Intuos Well, what, before you get into what, they all, what they're all about, what do, what do oh. they do? What is a tablet? Well, that, that's, that's what I was about to show you. Well, I like to butt in. Okay, <laughs> so what this is, is this is basically a mouse replacement. Uh, Wacom tablet is a, a tablet that you use for editing images, and you get a pen interface instead of a mouse interface. Now, uh, there is a learning curve, but once you use a Wacom tablet, and I can testify to this, once you use it for a couple weeks, you will never go back to mice. Um, I was I was editing uh, a picture today. It was a ring that had all these uh, inclusions and black dots on it, and I was able to edit the whole picture in about 15 minutes, and it would have taken me an hour and a half with the mouse. Uh, one of the main one of the main uh, selling points with a Wacom tablet is that there's pressure sensitivity with the pen. So if you're going in and you're touching up an area, if you just touch gently on the mouse, it only makes a small brush size. But if you press harder, then the brush size gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So you can go in, instead of having to constantly be sitting there changing your brush size, um, changing your opacity, changing your flow, uh, you can do that all with pressure sensitivity and with tilt. Um, so, and, and uh, yeah, so that's, I mean, that's fantastic. It's a good interface. It's a good gritty interface, so you get a little bit of feedback. I thought it was only for people that uh, uh, sort of are making the transition from drawing on paper to digital, but I've never drawn on paper. I mean, it's it's people die when I draw on paper. <laughs> my drawing is bad. Like, I was drawing a flower the other day, and my son's like, hey, nice table, Daddy. Like, so, like seriously, it's bad. But when I but I, when I edit, I always use a Wacom tablet, and I absolutely love it. The other thing that I love about the five 
is with the with the three and I think maybe the four, it came with the pen and mm. a mouse. And so when you were done using the pen, you put the pen away in its fancy little holder that it comes with. And then you grab the mouse and you put it on and you move it around. Or you use your own mouse and it takes up a lot of room. But what they've done with the 5 is that this is like a huge trackpad. And so you just put your finger on here and use that when you're not using the pen. And it's a super, super quick interface. And then you've got all the... Um, for, for people that never used a Mac... Uh, one thing that Mac has really uh, nailed down is finger gestures. So when you're on a Mac or, or on an iPad, like five-finger pinch, five fi four-finger swipe, two-finger swipe, three-finger grab, all these really fast shortcuts that you can use your fingers for to get things done really, really quickly, the Wacom tablet has all of them. That's pretty much the only thing that I miss when I go from my MacBook Air to my main computer is the, the finger gestures. Um, being able to do things quickly with just the swipe of a finger, and the Wacom tablet tablet brings that to my PC. Uh, mm. So it's it's fantastic. Uh, and then it's got all your little shortcut buttons here. It's hard to see because they're kind of dark and indented, but these are a whole bunch of shortcut buttons here. So if there's um, actions that you do on a regular basis, everybody knows the claw in Photoshop, so the, the shift um, alt and control buttons in Photoshop. You can program them to here, and you can just press all of three of these to, to do uh, you know complex operations instead of having to you know twist yourself around on the keyboard and stuff. Um, Is that the same thing that the the tablet the four has on the sides here? Yeah, you can actually program those buttons to do anything that you want. See, that's the thing. Like you have used a tablet a little bit, and you've gotten to the point where you're past the frustrating part, I think. Yeah. And and you love it. And I, everybody I, I love know it. that has a tablet has said that. It's frustrating at the beginning, and I haven't gotten past that point yet. Uh, but once you're past that point, everybody loves it. Uh, yeah. Our buddy Blake actually just piped up. and Blake is a, a tech guy. So he says the Wacom Cintiqs are amazing, too. Oh, uh, yeah. Something with screen built in. That's kind of cool. So you're basically, you're editing on the image, as he says, um, and note there's a rumor of a Wacom tablet, as in Windows slash Android tablet device. So now we're talking about the entire screen yeah. being your tablet. Yeah. So I started off, my very first one was a lower-end Wacom tablet, what would be the equivalent to today's Bamboo. Wacom tablets just didn't have the resolution and the size that I needed, so I went from there to a uh, to a uh, Intuos three. But I got the large. The large is too big. If you're looking at one, um, a lot of photographers that I've heard actually use the small, but the most the best selling one is the medium, and the medium is a nice size. It can fit in my laptop bag. Um, you know, it's it's a good size. It's nice and light. The small I hear a lot of people use that if they travel a fair amount. Um, but the Cintiqs are, are a thicker one, uh, a thicker Wacom tablet, but they have a, a high-definition monitor built right into them. So instead of working with your pen on the table and seeing the changes happen over there, you're actually working on your image. But they're 1200 bucks. You know, they, they start around $1,200 uh, for, for the cheapest ones and then go up from there. Um, and, and this one here is $400. $50. They're not cheap, but they're they are worth every penny. And my workflow with this tablet um, it is probably 30% faster with most of the stuff that I do. Wow. Um, I do wish they had a little bit better Lightroom integration. Um, you don't have any pen pressure uh, like recognition in Lightroom. Um, but I can still do things very, very quickly in Lightroom. And once I jump over to Photoshop, it's it's unbelievable the speed. So yeah. Highly recommend. Just actually piped up. Sorry, who's that? Uh, Darren. You know this, this oh. is guy that we know. No, no you 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 went you went, you went uh, muted there first. Oh, I was muted. So. Yeah, Darren. Um, interesting. <laughs> Should be in the show, man. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> well. What Darren's afraid of is that people that buy a Wacom tablet start liking it, and then Wacom goes to a uh, subscription service where you have <laughs> to subscribe to the tablet monthly, and then if you stop paying, then thugs come and take the tablet away. So yes, yes, that yeah. that is a that's a fear that many people have actually. Yeah, mainly just Darren. Yeah. Mainly just and everybody Darren. <laughs> else who was concerned about it has gone over to the subscription side. 
<laughs> Hi, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have friends that love this cloud, creative cloud stuff. And that's a whole other conversation <laughs> we're going to get into down the road. Again, I'm sure. Um, so that's cool. Uh, thank you for that review of the product. That's uh, something that we're trying to do a little bit more now is get into something that we've just experienced that's new. And uh, thank you, Gabe. That was awesome. Thank you. Uh, this is what I'm going to be talking about next week. I haven't had a chance to give it a good shot yet, but uh, this is the Rogue Grid system that you can mount just to your flash. I'm going to be using this at the wrestling event on Saturday night, which uh, is something that we're going to talk about in a few seconds. But um, that'll be a lot of fun. I'll be talking about that next week, let people know how I, how I felt about that. Cool. So that kind of brings us into our discussion then tonight, doesn't it? The discussion Apparently it does, according to the show notes. The show notes, it, it, it segue. It's very rough, but I, I went there. Uh, <laughs> And uh, the, the discussion tonight is obviously on trickery and shenanigans. What the heck are we talking about, trickery and shenanigans? Sounds I mean, Irish. <laughs> shenanigans. Uh, it's one of my favorite words, so I had to go there. Not so shenanigans. basically things that your camera can do that you might not have thought that you could do but are a lot of fun and can give you some really cool effects without having to go to the computer, without having to muck around with all kinds of stuff. Um, there's a lot of things that cameras have these days. Now... As we mentioned before, uh, there's a lot of things you don't need. Like there's some stuff in the that we're going to talk about tonight that you'll never even need to play with. Uh, my most expensive camera doesn't have any of these things, so it's certainly not stuff that you need. But they're fun, so let's talk about it. What do you think? Why not? I mean, we're here. <laughs> you know what? You're here. I put on a T-shirt. I'm here. Darren's <laughs> not here, but you know we're here, so we're going to get into it. Um, <laughs> Now, if you want to know more about some of these things that we're going to be talking about, things like in-camera HDR or you know time-lapse merging and things like that, we will be having, like we mentioned before, the how-to hangout specifically on how to learn those things. So this is an overview. This is, as we said in the past, something to get people inspired and to show you that there's some pretty cool things you can play with. Uh, so let's start off with this in-camera HDR thing. Now, there's a lot of people that talk about this. I know Darren uses in-camera HDR mm -hmm. for his real estate photography. Because it's easier. Just take a couple JPEG images and merge them together. Now, doing that in camera is super straightforward. The first thing you have to know, though, at least with the D7100, I'm pretty sure it's all cameras, that you have to be shooting in JPEG. It doesn't work if you're in RAW. The option isn't even in the, there in the menu. So you go into your camera, you go into the HDR function, make sure you're in JPEG, and what it's doing is it's taking two images and smashing them together unlike what we do normally with an HDR where we'll take five or, you know, three, five images, trying to get about two stops difference in RAW, and then, you know, merging them together, and then seeing how it looks. Sometimes it looks kind of cool. Now, there's two settings in the Nikon system. Uh, the first setting is HDR mode. The second is HDR strength. HDR mode, basically, you can choose single or you can choose a series. If you have a series, that means that this, the feature just stays on all the time. So every time I squeeze the shutter, it's making a new HDR image. If I just go single, then it's just that. You take one shot, it merges those shots together, and you've made your HDR. And then you can go shooting from there on, and it's not going to be making new HDRs. Now, what I like to think is, how are we going to make that look? The camera gives you the strength option as well, and that would be low, normal, high, or extra high. Extra high, I would imagine, would be that real surreal look. You know, where things are getting kind of funky. And low would be just kind of catching some of the highlights and some of the shadow detail and pump, bumping that up a little bit. Um, HDR in camera is fun, but I thought of something, and this is kind of a, a neat little side thing, but apparently my bubble's already been burst about that because Trey's already done this, you know. Um, I wanted to try and set my camera's intervalometer do a time lapse and have each camera, each photo I shoot be an HDR image. So you can actually set your HDR mode to series instead of single shot, so it'll keep on shooting it. You choose the HDR effect high, low, medium, normal, whatever. And then you turn on your time lapse and you sit your camera down, and every image you make would be an HDR. You get a whole series, what, two, three hours worth of images, and then you merge those into a little video. And now you have an HDR look. It's a lot of images. Yeah, it's a lot of images. <laughs> the nice thing is, each shot you take, if your camera's in HDR, each one picture is an HDR. 
Right. So it's not taking two images. But still two hours worth of images. That, that's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, you're right. It, you're right. It, it combines the three shots into one. I forgot about that. Yeah. I mean, two hours of images is still a lot of images. But then yeah. it does them in JPEG, so it's not so bad. Exactly. Okay, so it's, it's the same as shooting a normal time <laughs> lapse. You end up with you know maybe a thousand images, but right. those images you merge and it makes a thirty second clip. So it ends up being pretty straightforward. Um, now, have you ever done in camera HDR? Is that what you were just trying to do there, Gabe? Yeah, and I was actually I was trying to challenge you on your hypothesis that every time you shoot in in camera HDR, it's done in JPEG instead of RAW. Uh, it turns out you're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, really? You think it always shoots in JPEG? Well, that... Oh, yeah, no, those were JPEGs. <laughs> well, hey, I don't know if that's the case on every camera. I mean, maybe Olympus does it in RAW. I'm not quite sure, but at least in the camera I have that does it, and in all the other cameras I know of that does it, it's all JPEG, so... Yeah, when I, when I uh, activate the in-camera HDR um, and I take a series of... Oh, hold it. Oh, no, 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 Okay. So with the 5D Mark III, you can take an in-camera HDR. The output image is JPEG, but it can you can also set it to keep the source files. So let's say you, you do a three-camera HDR, and it creates an image for you in the camera, but you're not really happy with the image that it created. You can have it save the three images that it took to make that one image and then play with them at home. So those three images are raw, but the final image, the final result, is is uh, JPEG. So. Does it capture all three images and store them? Yes, four, all four images, the three that you took, and then the, the resulting. So this was a... Uh, this was a in-camera HDR that I just did uh, of my router. And so... Uh, this was a raw, 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 and then the final one is a JPEG. Very cool. So yeah. So then that way, if you don't like the HDR that it took, you can um, you have you have the source images. Yeah. Yeah. So that, and you can disable is... that on the 5D Mark III. You can have it discard the source images, or save them. I always save them. Very cool. You know. can't actually access the option on the on the menu for Nikon unless you're in JPEG. Oh, you have oh, to, yeah, interesting. You have, okay, you have to put it into JPEG before you can even turn that feature on. So okay, that's, so that's yeah, cool. we can uh, on the five D Mark III. It's got this creative mode button, which is the uh, it looks like a Wacom stylus pen. Now that I'm on the topic, but yeah, there you go. Now that it's focused, <laughs> you just press that and it brings up all the in camera um, fancy swancy stuff. Shenanigans. Shenanigans. It's actually called the Shenanigans button, um, but they got in a little bit of trouble from the Irish users, and so racist. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> as we all know, Irish is a race. Yes. Well, no. well not really. <laughs> but, uh, Let's just well, get out of here. People in Ireland watch our show. Or just be nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I have shot uh, my my 7D didn't have that option built in, and I've shot a lot more HDRs uh, with my 5D Mark III than I ever did with my 7D. Um, so it's nice just having the one button functionality. Hmm. Um, HDR is a lot like in camera. What is that? Multiple image. In a way, but multiple image stacks them in the camera. Yes. So that's a really cool thing that uh, you and I watched this video, and we, we actually showed this video another time, of a young lady who makes these amazing, amazing images of ivy. I'm going to do a screen share of this here. Okay. And uh, here we are. As soon as my screen share button allows, bada bing. So this is what I'm talking about here, how this is all done in camera. So while I'm showing this, Gabriel, why don't you explain the process? So yeah, the um, the 5D Mark III has another uh, creative mode. Um, when you click on the creative mode button here, uh, it's got three modes built in: um, picture style, multiple exposure, and HDR. So the HDR we just covered. So with multiple exposure, you can go in and you can set it so that um, to, to create an image like this, you set it to additive. Uh, you set the number of exposures that you want, anywhere from two to nine. And 
when you take one picture and then you take another, it stacks those images on top of each other and performs whatever action you, you set it to. Um, which is, I, I played around with it a few times. I have, I've never, there, there's a, a formula that, you know, you need good conditions to, to recreate it. I've never been able to re recreate them perfectly, but um, let me just do a quick screen share. I did go down by the lake with my beautiful wife the other day, specifically for the show. Now, of course, the second we got there, it started raining, so we could only take a few shots, but... So if you take this shot and you add this shot, you get this shot. That's cool. So it's all done in camera. Um, it's not as dramatic or, or as fantastic as the, the other girls' pictures, but we didn't have a lot of time to, to play. So if you take mm -hmm. this shot plus this shot, you get that shot. So it's this is all things that you can do in post, um, but once you get better at it, and it's something I'm, I'm doing a photo shoot, I think, next weekend. Um, it's going to be out in a farmer's field, and I'm hoping to play around with this a lot more then um, and have some better pictures to show for it. But this was just, you know, 15 minutes while we're getting, trying to keep our, our gear out of the rain. Yeah, um, you want to be careful but, for sure. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. It, it's, you know, a neat little creative thing that you can do that saves you from having to open it up in in Photoshop and mm -hmm. and play with the opacity and the um, and the, uh, the you know the the Layers added and all that yeah and the cool th this is um, the website is Dylan uh, sorry Dylan and Sarah or sorry Dylan Sarah D Y L A N D S A R A dot com uh, she goes into a little tutorial about how to do it as well uh, but yeah, this is she's something got a great YouTube tutorial on there it's fantastic mm -hmm. yeah this is something that we're gonna roll into a how to hangout as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but ultimately, she pretty much tells you what to do right there. So check it. It's a lot of fun. And again, this is just something to inspire people and use your own creativity to do what you want with this technique. Uh, what we are telling you is that this is out there. And now what we expect you to do is play around with it on your, on your own and use your own creativity to make it look cool. So there's that. Um, time lapse. So you do time lapse videos, don't you, Gabriel? Yeah. Um, oh, okay. that's cool. Yes. Yeah, this is a couple more of her her images. These are all with the 5D Mark III. It's all in camera. Oh, I should also state the 5D Mark III is much better to do this with than the Nikons because they have that additive option, where on the Nikons you don't have that as a choice. It's on or off. That's it. And that's really what makes it look like that. Yeah. I think you're cutting out there, Gabe. Uh oh. We might be losing Gabriel. Okay, well, maybe you can just come out and come back in. All right. All right. So he'll come right back. So, yeah, basically having the multiple exposure in camera is a lot of fun. You can play around with it, use your own creativity, and try some different things. One thing you might want to do is practice overexposing or underexposing in the first shot, and then the second shot would layer into it quite nicely. Uh, it might work a little bit easier for you that way. Now, another thing that we were going to talk about is time-lapse. And I mentioned that Gabriel's done quite a bit. I've done quite a bit recently on time-lapse, anything from, you know, raking my lawn, shoveling the driveway. I even did a time-lapse of the Day Tripper photo trip to Jackson Triggs Winery, which was a lot of fun. We set it up and had the uh, the whole lunch laid out on the tables in the downstairs in the big keg room. Uh, it was awesome. So we did a little time-lapse video of that. Um, oh, I was in Algonquin Park, and I did the time-lapse of the sun rising or sun setting at night and then rising back in the morning. Of course, my battery died halfway through it, and uh, I ended up going sunset and then sunrise right away. There wasn't the whole stars that I was looking for in the middle. The battery died too soon. So, <laughs> That's something to think about. If you're making time-lapse videos, have extra mm -hmm. batteries. And this is where a battery grip would really come in handy. Uh, somebody posted on the Day Tripper community about the battery grip and if it's worth having or not. And in my opinion, the, the big reason to have a battery grip where you're ha having two batteries in the camera once is for stuff like time-lapse where you just want to record for two, three hours and not worry about you know your battery dying halfway through. So mm -hmm. it makes a huge difference if you have extra battery life. I just yeah. did a, a time lapse of our Buttonville Airport session. Oh, by the way, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I, I don't do many time lapses because that functionality doesn't come built in with Canon. Um, you can get the Canon remote that adds time lapse with, for about thirty-six thousand um, dollars. <laughs> it's one hundred thirty bucks. <laughs> was it? Oh, I thought it was about no. three hundred. Honol Giga T. It's oh no no, no but uh, yeah sorry uh, yeah there's a good a wireless one the Honol um, but the actual Canon one is about three hundred dollars. I think yeah. you pay about. Twenty dollars per letter, C A N O N. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's something. But but I do a lot of when I go on a long shoot, I'll bring my GoPro and set that up to do a time lapse, and so that way I get my main images from my Canon, but then I get uh, additional images from the GoPro. I'm gonna do a screen share here and show the time lapse video of Buttonville Airport just because I can, and it's fun. So here we are. It's only 30 seconds. Neener, neener. Neener, neener. It's only 30 seconds, and enjoy. You're not going to hear the sound, but I can sing for you. No, I promised I wouldn't do that. Memories all alone. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Memories. You know, Cass is coming back, eh? Okay, Barbara. Hey, you can see there we go. Barbara Streisand, that was a reference. Oh, okay. yeah, Just a very quick little thing. Song. Didn't she? No, it's from Cats. Oh, it's from Cats. Yeah, Barbara Streisand was not in Cats. No, she wasn't. And just like that, this slideshow's uh, the that was pretty cool. Is over. Thanks, man. It was fun. That was a good night too. Yeah. You were awesome at that, by the way. Oh, thank you. It was a great night, and you did very well, and I had a lot of fun. Okay, there's my notes. Hey, look at my show notes, everybody. There we go. <laughs> and the time lapse are showing the magic behind the curtain <laughs> and the, the screen share I am the great wizard okay yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> okay so we've done the time we've talked about time lapse I love getting into time lapse and it's a lot more intricate than just you know setting your camera and hit and record you have to be on the right mode you have to make sure it's not getting brighter as the sun gets brighter and it's not getting darker as the sun goes down so usually you choose in like an aperture priority mode let it balance out the light, just let it go. So you have to set it first. There's some tweaky things that we can play around with uh, afterward, but that's something that's a whole other show, isn't it? And Yeah, and, and uh, one thing that a lot of people don't know is that you can process and create time-lapse videos right within Lightroom. And I haven't used that. In fact, um, I use a free thing called the Time-Lapse Assembler. Just so you can Which download is Mac it. Only. It's Mac only, so yeah. you, know, you should have a Mac anyway, but whatever. Yeah, if you're a sucker. <laughs> uh, I just love this show. Okay, it has to be at least once per show, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, find me at Nikon, I can beat on. Yeah, I know. It's okay, they could take it. Trust me, I've been pushed over by wrestlers, and they're still fine. <laughs> Except for their built-in lens hoods. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> It's only a thousand dollar repair. It's all good. Um, rear curtain flash. We played around with this at one of our night photography sessions. But you've got some really great examples of rear curtain, like first curtain and second curtain sync. Uh, this is something yeah. again. You could do this with an external flash. You could do it with your built-in flash. Uh, basically, when you go into your camera, you would hit hold your flash button down and just choose the flash option on an icon. You just hold that button right there on the side. It has a little lightning bolt for flash. Yoink, right there. And as you're holding that, you turn the dial, and you can choose rear curtain, slow sync, all those different things. Um, I'm going to do a screen share here and show people. Yeah, I'm trying to pull it up, but I pulled up my the chat window instead. That's all right. I got it right here. There you go. So it's pretty cool. If you look at the first one, first curtain sync, this guy right up here, as Gabe's name is there beside it, um, it basically fires the flash when the shutter opens. And if the shutter stays open for a couple seconds or 30 seconds or a 30th of a second or whatever, just a slower shutter, then you'll see the motion go into the shot. The second curtain sync is when the shutter, or sorry, the flash fires as the shutter closes. So you have blur and then sharpness. So these two modes are a lot of fun to play with. I love, we did this at one of our night sessions. In fact, um, I might have even posted a... Image of got that. an example image. This is actually an example image of um, 
not necessarily what you want to do. Can you see my screen share? Uh, I think you're freezing up again. Freezing up again. Oh, now you're back. Okay, a sec. So this was... Um, usually I have my camera set to rear curtain flash. There we okay. go. Okay, here we go. And... So you can see here, so this is at the end of the night. I'm at ISO like 6400. She's throwing the bouquet. It's a dark hall. Um, so I'm using the the uh, external, the, the shoe mount flash. And she's throwing the bouquet, and everything worked out perfectly, except you can see here. You've got that motion and everything, and then the flash hits, and so you have some blur and some motion in the same photo. And mm -hmm. you know who I am, and you know I love blur and motion. Some pretty cool stuff can be made that way, that's for sure. Uh, I think I just saw some comments come through. Let's see here. Da -da -da -da. What did Blake say? Oh, <laughs> he took his girlfriend to see Cats in Toronto. Actually, it was a really great show. <laughs> so no knocking it. No, I actually I saw it a few times because one of the girls that I lived with uh, when I was young was Jenny Any Dots in the production of Cats. So she walked around all day singing Cats and I basically learned all the songs off by heart. So I have fond memories of it and I was thinking about going to see it again now that it's back. I remember my uh, my mother and my brother went to see Cats on Broadway when I was younger. Oh, cool. He came back with the little flyer for it and everything. Yeah. Uh, Blake, Blake suggested a shoot at a theater would be a really, really awesome day trip. You know, I actually, what I thought... If we could get access to a, um, like a fish store after hours, get really cool pictures of like you know, like anyways, this is shouldn't be talking about this during the show, but you know, pictures of fish <laughs> through the glass and stuff. You can get cool tropical fish that look like they're in their natural environment. We we're just shooting through the glass with all the cool lighting and stuff. We could arrange that. But, yeah, that's always something we could talk about. Hey, if people are watching and they want to do a thing on fish photography, then uh, let us know. Or if anybody knows anybody that... Oh, actually, I do. <laughs> As I was asking any, our listeners if anybody knows anybody that works at the new aquarium that's uh, opening up in downtown Toronto. And just as I said that, I remember that I do know somebody that works there. So maybe uh, we can put together something, uh, go in there after hours and shoot through the tanks there. I was even thinking Big Al's. Uh, the the place in the Henry's Plaza. Yeah, yeah, that's actually the place I was thinking about. Originally. Oh, okay. Yeah, they've got a huge yeah. shark tank and all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, well, we but sit that's... there forever just looking at the shark. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I would. I've it's tried cool. taking pictures there before, but I always feel awkward. Yeah. So I let's get back to. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Eh? During store hours, they they love that. Um, let's get back into our show topic a little bit. How about that? Just a little. Just a little. Um, In-camera effects. There's some pretty cool things you can do in camera now. Um, one of the things that the 700 or 7100 is really known for is this little option right there. Focus. Focus. It doesn't want to. Effects. It says effects. I swear to oh, God it does. It's coming in. It's uh, coming in. Logitech 920. No. Fail. Anyway, it's that little remote <laughs> dial right there. It says effects on it, and uh, <laughs> that's what we're looking for, right? The, uh, there. I'm not a dentist, people. I can't do things backwards. <laughs> so when you choose that option, you have many, many features in camera you can play around with. Uh, some of these features include... This will work better. Maybe. Oh, there, there you go. go. All right. Night vision. My camera has night vision, but we'll explain that in a second. SEAL Team 6 uses the 7100. Yes, that's right. You can credit Nikon for Bin Laden's death. Anyway, that was just <laughs> awkward. <laughs> <laughs> so you can do low key, you can do high key, you can do silhouette, you can do selective color and miniature effect, color sketch, and, of course, night vision. Uh, basically, night vision is just it turns your camera to black and white and cranks up the ISO. So mm -hmm. even though it looks crappy because of all the grain, it's in black and white, so you can get away with it. There you go. High key and low key, self-explanatory. High key is when er there is no definite black, and low key is when there is no definite white. 
So that's kind of interesting. And, of course, you have all the other funky things in there. Uh, miniature mode. Everybody has miniature mode these days. Even Canon Point shoot cameras have miniature mode. That's basically like it's trying to simulate that tilt-shift effect. Mm-hmm. So one little bit's in focus, and the other side pieces are out of focus. So it makes it look like uh, so you can take a picture of the city from, say, up on top of the CN Tower, but it makes it look like it's a model. Um, so I tell the people, little model people and stuff. Yep, I did that effect when I was at the Skylon Tower at the Niagara Falls Day trip, and uh, it, it looked really cool. Skylon Tower, you have all the big uh, American side, Canadian side of the falls, and then you have everything looking like a miniature. It was really neat. Cool. Uh, selective color is actually something... On one hand, people hate it. I mean, honestly, how many times have you <laughs> seen a mean, photo? Hate it. Um, there's a, a bride holding a bouquet of red roses, and everything is black and white but the red roses. Okay, here's the rule that I found. Photographers hate it. Customers love it. Do selective coloring. Because customers buy it by the boatload. They love really? it. But photographers hate it. Yeah. That's weird, eh? It's like HDR. Photographers hate HDR. Consumers love HDR. Hmm. You, you just make any picture with HDR. It could be of a of a toilet. <laughs> Put it in HDR and they'll buy it. I'll get right on that. <laughs> <laughs> what impresses me the most about the selective color feature in Nikon is the fact that you can use it for the video. Hmm. So I always imagine this, like if I ever get down to uh, a jazz festival, the, the New Market Jazz Festival is coming up this weekend, and if there's a bluegrass band there or you know any jazz band with horns, everything could be black and white but the gold horn. Mm-hmm. And it looks so clean. I mean, that's kind of a neat effect, I think. I don't know if I would use it all the time, but at least in a situation like that, that would be kind of cool. Yeah. Um, I might try that, who knows, if I end up at the jazz festival. But this Saturday I'll be actually quite busy so I can't wait for that, and I'll be talking about that in a minute, too. So, yeah, lots of cool in-camera toys. What cool in-camera effects does your camera have, Gabriel? Um, well, my in-phone in, my in, uh, in phone camera can do all that. <laughs> uh, it has selective coloring and, and all that stuff, but, uh, but as for my 5D Mark III and my 7D, um, nothing. 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 You paid all that money and you don't have these? I paid all that money and, and all it does is take good pictures. Weird. It takes good <laughs> pictures? You've got a great camera. Well, <laughs> well, all it does is help me take good pictures. Well, on that note, <laughs> your entire last vacation you shot in in camera black and white. Yeah. So I've been playing with, I was always kind of intimidated by black and white because when you shoot in black and white, you're forced to see the light. And I've been teaching myself more and more recently how to see the light because uh, it's, it's something that, you know, I, I could do in the past, but you, you can always sharpen a skill. And uh, so I went away for a week on vacation camping. I shot the entire, the entire week on a 50 millimeter one four in black and white. And um, it was great. I, I was really, really happy with the uh, resulting images and the things that I learned, and um, and you know, basically, you know, if you put your camera to high ISO and put it in black and white, then that's the night vision that the Nikon has a, a preset setting for. But you can just do it man- manually in a, uh, in a in a Canon. Um, trying to see if I can quickly pull up a couple of. If I can quickly. Oh, here we go. A um, couple of my favorite images from the weekend. That's not it. That's not color. That picture, but yes, that's color. It has nothing to do with what we're talking about. At, at all. At all. Yeah. But you just love your wife so much, you want to show the world. Well, there you go. There Plus, you, go. you know, nothing wrong She's with a that. Good-looking woman. There you are. There you go. So this one here, um, I really enjoyed. Um, you know, when when you're seeing light, you notice light more, and then you can play with it. So uh, we were, um, a few of us were just having beers by the campfire. I went to go to the cooler to grab another beer, which you have to keep locked underneath picnic tables because we have aggressive raccoons there, and they try and get into the into the coolers. But I saw this, and um, 
so I just alcoholic aggressive raccoons by the <laughs> Yes, yes. Well, they'll go into anything, um, and so I propped it up on a case of beer, um, set a two second shutter delay, and this was uh, what was this? Um, do, 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 one eight, uh, eighth of a second at uh, ISO 3200 mm. at one four on my 50 mil. And so I just absolutely, I love the detail, the shading in this image. And, uh, you know, they're in the middle of a huge forest, but because it's in the black and white, it only catches the tones. You can't see anything else. It's a really cool shot. Um, did you think of maybe asking Trish and Jaden to sit up inside there so you can actually get the silhouettes of them in there? Yeah, it actually wasn't their tent. Um, oh, never mind. <laughs> there, was four, there was four families uh, uh, um, camping, and that was one of the other families, so... I, cool. you know, I was hoping we didn't see any silhouettes, <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I mean. I think I know what you mean. <laughs> so, um, this is the, the horror of breath, brushing the teeth every morning and night. Um, that's not really, oh, so um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not really, you know, interesting when it comes to black and white. Um that's this one I absolutely shot. loved. So you can really, I mean, it, it, you know, because marshmallows are white, it really pulls out the marshmallow, right? And then everything in the background is, is secondary, but still enough to add to the image because all you're dealing with is tones. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just trying to skirt through here because I know there's a picture of a naked bum in here somewhere. Wow. So. <laughs> I swear it's not mine. <laughs> so then, you know, they had this really cool effects on the sand that uh, the waves were making when they rushed over and they're leaving the, the sediment down. And when you take it in black and white, it really creates some cool patterns. The black and white really, instead of distracting everything with color, the black and white really brings that out. So Yeah, that wouldn't be the same photo if that was in color. No, absolutely not. And I, I might even be able to show it in color. It's still not a bad photo in color. Uh, no, I can't. It would take me too long to find it, and I'm not going to spend the whole time doing that. Um, it's still not a bad photo in, in color, but it really distracts from the image. Mm -hmm. But it's cool. Great shots. And this is all done in camera. So this is when you get home, you have all these images. You don't have to worry about processing everything, right? Exactly. Yeah, it makes it easier. Especially, how many photos did you take on that weekend? Uh, it was a week. Um, so from Sunday to Sunday, I took... Um, actually, I was pretty impressed. I only took about 900 photos. Wow. So, which is not that... And when you, when you consider that uh, I was shooting RAW and JPEG, um, I wanted the JPEG as a reference for the RAW. Uh, that's only about 450 photos. Because mm. um, each time I press a button, it took two pictures. Um, so I had the RAW go to one card and the, the JPEG go to another and then just, you know, mashed them up in Lightroom and, and, uh, it was great. Cool. And this is the beauty of having these features in camera though, isn't it? It just makes things uh, so much more straightforward if you have the features, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and I also love the ability to write to different cards, different media to different cards and stuff. That, that was really nice. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to quickly keep on going here. There's another really cool trick in camera that you can do that I also learned from Trey Ratcliffe. Um, turning the self-timer on for shooting a bracketed photo. So, for example, I'm trying to make an HDR image. I've set my camera to actually bracket five images. So let me just set that up here. Uh, take this off effects and go to aperture priority because I live in aperture priority. And then I go to three and then five images for bracket. I simply go into my menu, I go to interval timer shooting, right uh, there, kind of hard to see anyway, yeah, there we are, interval timer shooting, I hit over to the right, I go back left, and hit OK. Now it sets the timer and just takes the five images right away. So now I've got those five separate bracketed images. Uh, each one is different, obviously. Of course, it's on nothing, so you're not going to see anything anyway. And I could take those images and use those as an HDR now. So it makes it very straightforward. Again, you just go mm -hmm. into Menu, Interval Timer Shooting. You go right, left, OK, and then it turns on the timer, and off it goes. 
And I'll tell you, that's one of my my hidden secrets that I've that I found for many things is I use that two second timer um, for a lot of stuff. Like even if I'm taking a picture where people are posing, if it's in low light and I think that there might be some camera shake, I'll do the two second timer. I'll hit the button and then just really brace myself. And then I've got two seconds to really you know get myself in a concrete position, and then it takes the picture. Mm-hmm. Um, another secret uh, that Ross will attest to that I learned when I when I used to do uh, competitive target shooting, um, if you're taking a picture and uh, it's in a, you know, you need to be really still to do it, take two deep breaths. On the exhale of the third breath, hold your breath um, on, on full exhale and then take the picture. And that's sort of a, a secret for getting the steadiest shot. It's awesome. good because most of the stuff I shoot HDR is handheld anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, I I love to I would love to say that I use my tripod for every HDR, but the best HDRs I've made have actually been handheld. So yeah, uh, and nowadays with the ISO settings that are available to us and stuff, it's not as necessary. Just remember, if you are doing um, a bracketed photo, make sure your auto ISO is turned off. Right. Key. Very key, or else you end up yeah. with the same exposure on every shot. <laughs> yeah, so, three images. Yeah. <laughs> um, another thing, mirror up mode, MUP mode. This is a question that was actually really funny. When I was first starting in sales, uh, one of the people came up to me, and they're like, what is MUP mode? MUP mode right there. Um, it's MUP mode. It's Muppet mode, yeah, exactly. I actually thought I was all smart, and I said, well, that's kind of like an advanced manual mode. It lets you do different things in manual mode because, you know, like that's what cameras do. Um, I was wrong. It has nothing to do with that. <laughs> what mirror up mode is is so that when you take a picture, and I'm going to do this the bad way. Don't oh. try this at home, boys and girls. I hate it when he does this. I know. I'm such a rebel. So. Oh, wow. Listen to you. <laughs> All right, so you take a picture. It's in mirror up mode. It releases the shutter, and then, or sorry, lifts the mirror, I should say. Mm-hmm. And as soon as you take the squeeze the shutter one more time, it releases the mirror and takes the picture. The concept is that it will give you less jitter that way. When the mirror flaps up and down, it makes the camera shake a little bit. And if you're making these long exposure photos, you don't want any kind of jitter in the shot at all. Mm-hmm. That's just one more tool you could use. Interestingly enough, um, Sony doesn't need that. You understand why, don't you? Oh, because of their MILF systems? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> MILF is the mirrorless interchangeable lens format, or otherwise known in more politically correct ways called compact system cameras, where they have no mirror flipping up and down. But no, that's not what I'm talking about. The Sony cameras, oh, okay. um, they have a translucent mirror, so their mirror stays fixed down, and light passes through it. Oh, and that's right. The sensor. So yeah. the mirror doesn't have to go up and down at all anyway, so they don't need to have the It's like one-way on. mirrors that you see in creepy houses. That's right. Light passes through it and bounces off of it. Creepy houses. What houses do you go to? <laughs> Some of these are creepy. You've never seen Cabin in the Woods? <laughs> I love uh, that look. I gotta hang out more with you in these creepy houses. <laughs> I thought we were in creepy houses already. What's with that? Anyway, yeah, mirror up mode. Uh, so that's kind of a fun thing you can play around with. Now, fine tuning. Okay, this is something that kind of gets under my skin sometimes. A lot of customers, granted, you've just spent two thousand dollars on one of the best lenses there are. But if it's slightly out of focus, what do you do? All right, first of all, if it's out of focus across the entire photo, there's a problem. If you cannot get focus, there's a problem. But if your focus is a little bit back or a little bit front, you can push that or pull that in a lot of cameras. You have in-camera focus adjustment, uh, calibration, you can say. It's called micro-focus adjustment, where you can tweak your focus forward or backward in camera. Uh, it's an important thing to know. But did you know, Giver? That not only can Tell you do right. that, uh, I'm about to inform you. Uh, not only can you do that with focus, but you could also do it in your metering modes. Can your camera do that? The can. In other words, there's a menu you can go into, and you can say, "All right, my camera is overexposing when I'm in spot metering, and I'm taking a picture of a very specific thing, and every mm. picture I end up taking is too bright." I can go into my camera, go to the spot metering option, and tweak my adjustment to make it a little bit darker. Oh. 
or my matrix metering or my evaluative metering. I can actually choose in camera, tell my camera from now on, matrix metering, everything is, has to be too dark. And it'll do that. Of course, it's not voice command. Go figure. I have to press buttons to make Stupid it do it. icons. Uh, I know. No voice command yet. But, you know, eventually once they start working with Google, they'll come up with that. Right, Gabe? Exactly. Camera, take picture. There you go. No? Uh, uh, oh, yes. Oh, look. Canon does do it. Do it's they? under the camera menu function 2 labeled that thing that Brian's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so technically, no, it doesn't have it. <laughs> uh, it might. It might. I just uh, I wouldn't know where to find it right now. It may have that functionality real time. I'm not sure. It sounds like, like it sounds reasonable that it would. Well, of course. I mean, there's no reason why Nikon would do it and Canon wouldn't. I mean, it's it, except like... for the fact that maybe Canons are just built to get it right. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'll go with that. I'll go with that. <laughs> anyway, that's a really cool trick that your camera yeah. can do. You can go in there and you can you can funkify it a little bit. Yeah. That, well, it's also, I mean, it can help people if, if people have a style. Say, you know, my style is everything's overexposed a bit. Then you can go in and you can set up your camera to shoot in your style. Yeah. I know. I, bet, I mean, I know when Peter shoots, I mean, everything is overexposed by a stop and a half. Every single picture he takes is overexposed by a stop and a half. So this is Peter McKinnon you're talking about. Peter McKinnon, yeah, sorry. Superstar um, Pete. <laughs> Superstar Pete, yeah. Maybe go out for breakfast with that guy. Oh um, yeah, at least breakfast. So yeah, so if he can, um, yeah, as long I, as you don't make can... him breakfast in the morning, because then I'll start to think things are a little bit awkward between you two. Awkward <laughs> or fantastic. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> to quote Peter Decay. <laughs> or George, 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 Peter. George, George Decay. I think you have a little bit of a yeah situation Peter on my brain. Yeah, a little Peter on your on your Peter. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> now that Pete will never watch our show again. <laughs> yeah, I know. Once again, what is that with me? I have a perma shovel attached. So hey. let's monitor off delay. Monitor off delay. Okay, check this out. How many times... I'm just talking you and me, Gabriel, right now. Oh, it's an you know, infomercial. We, we talk about stuff to customers a lot, right? So when we're doing a day trip, we have to flip our camera around and show people quite a bit. Mm. So if I hit play on the back of my camera, it would stay playing. Well, I might as well put a picture so you can see. There you go. There's my picture of my picture. It's like a picture of a picture. It is. That's, that's the photo that I won the... Uh, yeah. uh, the Henry's photo contest with that is up nice. at every Henry's store. So anyway, it's for sale. it is exactly. But you notice what's happening or not happening? It's not yeah. turning off. It's not turning off. Look at that. Heavens to Betsy. Betsy. Great Caesar's ghost. Oh, okay. There's all kinds of funny things coming out of your face. Huh? <laughs> all right. So if I go into so, menu, it'll uh -huh. stay on menu forever and never turn off. I guess ultimately what I'm trying to say is you can adjust the, the time mm -hmm. that your display shows on the back of the screen. Um, it's important for me on day trip or photo sessions because I'm like, all right, well, you can do this feature in this menu and see this is what it looks like, and then it won't be there. Right. Meanwhile, people want to see when you tell them about something. So I can choose to have that turn on. Mine's it actually just that. does that to mess with people's heads. I do, and I get yeah. smacked around like a redheaded <laughs> stepchild. It's not fun. Um, but ultimately... I've set that to go on for 10 minutes now, so I don't have to worry for 10 minutes. It'll still nice. stay there. And you can change and on that. The cannons, yeah, I think you can do that, but it's usually tied into the um, the sleep time of the camera. So you can have it uh, so that it stays on, and then it will stay on until the camera goes to sleep. Mm. What made me think of actually talking about that in tonight's show is because um, our friend Stephanie, who has been on many sessions with us, mm. uh, she just picked up a new Samsung point-and-shoot, the mm. EX2F. Sweet little point and shoot, and I hope she's having a good time using it. Uh, but one of the questions that she had was, you know how cameras have this in-camera help all the time? Mm -hmm. Like you, you hit the menu button and this help window comes up and says, hey, you know, if you're stupid and you don't know how to use your camera, then we will give you a really weird sentence that will still help you not understand how to use the camera. <laughs> but we'll keep it up on your screen for the next 20 seconds and not let you do things. So... Um, she was getting a little frustrated with that feature, so I realized that on her camera she can go in there and she can shut that help off. So that's just yet another option that you can go into your menu and turn 
the monitor or the help guides, things like that. You can turn them on and off. If you don't like them, you can get rid of them. You just have to look in the menu for it. That's a good idea. Yeah, thank you. Um, anything else there, Gabriel? Um, no, that's sort of, you know, read your manual, find out the different things that your camera can do. Um, you know, if, you're, if your DSLR can't do this, this fun stuff, then usually your camera phone can. Um, and, and sometimes, I mean, we're always talking about inspiration. And one of the problems that people run into is they run out of, you know, I don't know what to shoot, you know, or, or I'm not feeling inspired to shoot anything. And sometimes I'll go out on a photo walk and I'll just bring my phone because mm. there's so many different things that you can do with this. And I'll pick an app and I'll say, okay, yeah, today I'm just going to use this app and I'm going to take some cool looking pictures just using this. And uh, and usually that'll spark another idea. It's like, oh, you know what I should do? I should come back with my big camera and do blah blah blah. Um, and yeah, so you know whether you have it inside your camera or you, you do it on your phone or you have a point and shoot that does it. Uh, these tips, these types of creative, different ways of looking at things, uh, are great for inspiration. And and it's also anything that we can do to get you into your manual. Reading your computer manual, I'm sorry, your uh, your camera manual is 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 gravy. So if that gets you in your manual, then good. Yeah, but the yes. problem is some manuals are 355 pages long. So, so Stephen King books and people read those. Ah, oh, good point. So I did read Tommy Knockers. It was very long, but that's a whole other conversation. So. Uh, <laughs> Oh, and by the way, um, we're going to get into the TAT, the tip, app, or tool of the week. Uh, the tip, or sorry, the app that we talked about last week was, I believe it was last week or the week before, how you can download instruction manuals for Nikon on your phone. So mm -hmm. speaking of manuals, when we were doing, or when I was doing some research for the show tonight, I actually went to my phone and went into the manual for some of that information. I have the actual manual back here, but it's handy to have them on you too. Yeah. Absolutely. I always download my manuals to my phone. Um, actually, the cool thing now is if you use Android or iOS devices, uh, you can download the Google Books app. And from the Google Books app, you can actually upload your own PDFs. So I've uploaded, anytime I get any uh, gear, so I have, I have the manual for my microphone. Um, I use a, a Snowball microphone. Uh, I've got the manual for the Wacom tablet. I've got the manual for my coffee maker. Every time I get a manual, I get the PDF version of it, and now I can just upload it to Google Books, and it's available on my iPad, on my Android tablet, on my phone, on all of my devices, no matter where I am. So anytime I need one of my manuals, it's right there. Hmm. So there's your tip of the week on how to get your ma your manuals for your gear everywhere that you are. Unless you use BlackBerry, then you suck. Um, I'm going to quickly show something. Speaking of reading your manuals, uh, this was just posted on Facebook. Whoa. <laughs> this poor lady... Um, oh, extreme adventure no. photographer Don Kish has a reputation of doing what it takes to get the photo. She took quite a bash on a recent assignment while using her D7000 in an Outex waterproof case. Uh, I guess apparently she was using this waterproof case and it schmucked her in the face. Oh. And, uh, yeah. So note to self. Okay. Be very careful when using waterproof cases and going through rapids with your camera attached to your head. Yeah, I find any time I have a large object, hard object in front of me, I try to keep it away from my facial region anyways. So. That was actually posted <laughs> by our buddy Brian Watts, the hockey wow. photographer, and Brian is going to be helping me out on Saturday, which kind of leads me into the tip app or tool of the week. And this week, I know this is going to sound a bit funny, but this week is actually sponsored by my friends at PWE Wrestling. Uh, PWE is... Uh, a, an absolute blast. It's Power, Power Slam Wrestling Extreme. This Saturday at August 3rd from about 7 o'clock to about 10 o'clock or so at the Ferris Lane Community Church Gym. It's 49 Ferris Lane in Barrie. Um, this is an awesome indie wrestling event. 
I shoot for these guys. I can't wait to go do this on Saturday night. We're going to be doing portraits of the guys and everything like that. Uh, if anybody is into ind indie wrestling, this is probably the best one I've been to. I've been to quite a few different indie wrestling things around the area. In fact, I sold my tickets to Ring of Honor, which is a televised wrestling event, so I can go to this one on Saturday. Uh, I'm super excited. The main event's going to be a cage match. I mean, a cage match in Barry. I can't believe that. That's pretty sweet. So anyway, uh, thank you to PWE Wrestling for sponsoring this uh, tip, app, or tool of the week segment. And uh, I can't wait to see you guys on Saturday. So if anybody's interested, register now, because they're going to sell tickets out, I predict. Anyway. It's like seeing Brian all giddy. Oh, I'm so excited, man. This is going to be so fun. I mean, wrestling is fun because you know it's, it's, it's athletic. I mean, it is definitely athletic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not really uh, the kind of thing real? where you can't say it's not real. <laughs> you can't say it's not real because people get injured, right? I right. Mean, people get injured if you don't do it right. It's a it's a it's a team. These guys work together to make the make the the stunts work. Right. Watching that is it's such a skill that these guys have, and they really work hard to do it. And you really get an appreciation for that when you're watching local talent do it. It's just so fun. You're right there at ringside. You can reach out and touch them, but you shouldn't because they will punch you in the face. Or throw your camera on the ground. Or <laughs> <laughs> there's only one guy, and he paid for it, so it's all good. I mean, financially, not physically. It's Got it. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, the actual tip, or the I should say, the app that uh, PWE has sponsored is something called Flixel. F L I X E L. You can download download this for your smartphone. I think Android. And iPhone both allow you to use it. Um, I don't think BlackBerry lets you to use it. <laughs> You're just shaking your no. head. It's BlackBerry, of course not. Anyway, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I was listening to the news this morning, and a guy was like, and we're going to have our tech specialist. He's going to be talking about the new BlackBerry. Are they still a thing? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty bad. I'm going to do a quick screen share here and show you what this is all about because it is so cool. They've actually come out with a whole new thing. It's called cinematography or something. Cinem cinema I, I highlighted it there so you can see it. Anyway, this is Flixel. Life isn't still. Basically what it is, I'm going to share this uh, little video here. You're not going to hear it. But what's going on is a picture, and then you can draw on a certain area that's moving and have it continue moving in the photo. Oh, it's like one of those animated images. So you're shooting That's video, cool. but it's only going to move where you actually draw with your finger on the screen. See the steam coming up? It's the coolest thing. And actually, the person who invented it came into our store at Henry's and was telling us about it. He's like, you got to download this. It's so awesome. That's and really cool. It is. Uh, here, I'm just going to do a quick screen share now. Because you can do animated GIFs on Google Plus, this is one that you know. And and, and you know, there's there's camps like there is in whether your picture should have noise or not, or uh, whether you should use selective color. So there's some people that like it and some people that don't. And that screen share didn't work. But this is one of the cooler images that I've seen, and I just have to activate it. There we go. Yes, I've seen that too. That's amazing. So here, so you've got the owl all nice and still, but then you've got the snowy, the falling snow around. I mean, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That is art. You know, it, it art is whatever moves you, and that that moves me. That picture moves me. I love that. I agree with so you. That's a really if, cool shot. If that's a cool app to to make um, effects and images like that, and uh, start the train because I'm on board. There you go. Download it. Try it out. I downloaded it right away. I haven't really had um, the time to turn it on and get it going when I was shooting something. I should have done it when I was going to see my brother on the train. That would have been Is pretty it free. Sweet. It's yeah, it's free. It's free. Okay. It's a free app, and again, that's Flixel. F L I X E L. I will put that in the show notes when the show is over. So if anybody's interested in downloading that app, it'll be there for you. Awesome. That's it for tonight, everybody. Unless you have anything else to add, there, Gabriel. Uh, no. That's that's. Everything that I had on my mind. All right. Well, the only other thing I have to add is the fact that Day Tripper Photo has a couple cool sessions coming up. On August 11th, we're going to be doing another Bring on the Night session. That's going to be at Fairy Lake. Those are and fun. They are fun. 
Yeah. They're probably my second favorite sessions that we run. My first, of course, would be the Muskoka Wildlife Center, because how could you go wrong when you're this far away from wolves? But uh, well, a... whether you mean to be or not is how you go wrong. Yeah. Oh look, I'm this far away from a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, it's funny. Uh, the New Market Camera Club theme for this month is Grace Under Pressure, and. Mm. Uh, I couldn't help to, but to think of Anthony uh, with the wolf taking a picture of the wolf as the wolf is coming up at him. Uh, he's totally cool about it. He has his camera like this, and the wolf's snarling and staring at him. Um, but that's not my photo. That's Rick's photo, so I can't submit that. But anyway, that'd be cool. So August 11th, Bring on the Night at Fairy Lake. And September 7th, tying into PWE back for a second, uh, on September 7th, PWE and Day Tripper Photo have aligned to have a whole session on teaching how to shoot wrestling photography. It doesn't necessarily mean it's only for wrestling. That's where we're going to be. We're going to have our own wrestlers in the ring for us. Uh, we're going to have a Q&A period where we can actually talk with the wrestlers and find out what they're doing. And uh, We're going to talk about composition, planning ahead, shooting in low light, all these things that apply to anything that you want to shoot in low light. So this is going to be a great session with a lot of good content. Uh, it's going to be from about... I'd say 4 o'clock until 6 o'clock, so a two-hour class. And then after that, you get to shoot ringside for the entire back-to-school, uh, back to, back to school, I believe, bash. Yeah, back-to-school bash is what they're calling it. Cool. Um, and that's going to be ringside shooting for the entire event from 7 o'clock till 10. So essentially from 4 o'clock until uh, 10 o'clock, you have all the shooting you want to do. Uh, you have the instructors. I even have a little surprise, one of the professional... Our professional photographers for TNA wrestling and ROH wrestling, and uh, she's an absolute blast. Hopefully, she'll be there as well to lend her experience to this. Like, you know, I shoot it, but she gets paid to shoot it, so that's gonna be a lot of fun. And, and the student that we feel has not learned the most, uh, a wrestler will come down and smash her camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's a special treat for people. I'm anyway. sorry, that was yeah. a surprise. Yeah, it was a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so August 11th, Ring on the Night, September 7th, Wrestling with PWE Wrestling. And if you're interested, see them on Saturday night as well. It's going to be so much fun. I will be there. Brian Watts will be there. And um, I'm trying awesome. to get Gabriel to be there, but you have to shoot this wedding or something. Something <laughs> not important or anything. But we'll see. We'll Darn see. a huge chunk of my income. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Gabe, man, thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, Thanks for having me. Oh, of course. And unfortunately, Darren's not with us tonight, but he's with us in spirit because you know Darren. He is always, you know, his spirit's floating around doing funny things. Smile on his face and a blackberry in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a beer. <laughs> and a beer. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching tonight. And uh, we had great viewership tonight. I was watching the numbers going up and up and up, and I really appreciate Ooh. that. Uh, and hopefully that will continue. By the way, you can watch all of our shows. Click like, click subscribe, join in our community, be a part of the Day Tripper Photo experience, and you will only enjoy it more. Thank Every you all so you, much. you click the subscribe button, Keanu Reeves loses a movie contract. Well, if that were only true. <laughs> only true. Uh, sorry, I just had a moment there. Uh, anyway, keep on clicking. That might help it. It might help. You never know. All right, guys. Have a great night, and we'll see you all next week when our show topic will be on iPhoneography. No oohs and ahs from the audience? We just I just hate that it's called iPhoneography when there's so many cameras, that, so many phones that take better pictures. But, okay, we'll go with iPhoneography. <laughs> Who knows? It may change. <laughs> Apparently it might change by then, but there'll be a cool show nonetheless. Anyway, awesome. guys, That'll be great. take care. Thanks. Have, Good night. Good night, everybody. Wait, where's the button? <laughs> All right. And for those of you that, that don't have uh, that don't think it's going to be a good show, tune in because I got some tips that you'll enjoy. Okay, fair enough. So that's it. Bye. <laughs>